its sixth straight meeting, the Federal Reserve again opting to keep interest rates unchanged. All this as it aims to lower inflation. The Fed conceding there has been a lack of further progress toward the committee's 2% inflation objective. And here to break it all down for us is ABC Business reporter and our friend Alexis Christophorus. Hey good guys, to see you. Good to see you as always. All right, explain this decision for us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look, the long and short of it is inflation is not behaving the way we want it to, the way the Fed wants it to. For the third month in a row, inflation coming in hotter than expected. And yesterday, I think the Fed, under no uncertain terms, said, look, get ready for rates to remain higher for longer. I think consumers need to start making peace with that. And just to give you a feel for how far we've come with rates in just the past two years, take mortgage rates, for instance. So two years ago, the Fed started hiking rates. The rate on a 30-year mortgage was about 4%. It is now over 7%. Credit cards, another great example. The rate was about 16%, still high. Mm -hmm. It's now about 21%. That's a record high. And if you have a store-branded credit card, you could be paying interest of 30% or mm. more. And then when it comes to auto loans, we're getting hit there too. They're about double where they were just two years ago, closing in on 8% now. And it's not all bad news. You say higher interest rates are good for savers. You can make money on your money. Yes, there is a silver lining. For those of us who are saving money, if you shop around, you can still get interest rates of 5% or better for things like CDs, money market accounts, even uh, old-fashioned traditional savings accounts. You need to shop around. Online banks, regional banks tend to have better, more competitive rates than, than most banks. They tend to, not always. But, but going back to those interest rates, any hints as to when we could see a cut coming there? Unfortunately, I think it's really up in the air and we're sort of in this indefinite hold pattern. The Fed wants to see inflation get closer to its 2% target. Remember, inflation is at 3.5% right now. We were hoping we'd get that rate cut in June or the September meeting. Now they're saying we may not get any rate cut at all this year. Mm. There was a little talk the next move might be a rate hike. The Fed uh, threw cold water on that pretty quickly yesterday. Fed Chair Powell said it is probably, quote, unlikely, very unlikely that the Fed's next move would be to hike rates. So what's the best move to make if you want to take out a loan for a yeah. house or a car? I think, you know, it's really important right now to prioritize paying down debt, especially if it's high yield credit card debt. And then bust out the calculator and crunch the numbers. Is buying something, is financing now right for you and your family? And I think cars are a great example of that. The average age of a car right now on the road, 12 and a half years. Mm -hmm. People are holding people on to their cars. Wow. Yes, there mm -hmm. are even 20 year old cars out there and people flaunt it too. Hey, look, I'm keeping my car on the road. It's still safe. It's still good. Part of the reason a new car right now is about $47,000. Insurance up 20% in just the past year. And you, as we saw, it's higher to now, you know, uh, finance that car. So if it works for you and, and you feel safe in that car, more and more people are hanging on to it. So is it better to buy or lease a car? I'm always torn because, I mean, you lease one, you can get a new one in, what, three years? Or you, you don't have to worry about maintenance and all of that stuff? That is the eternal question. I am not a fan of leasing. And I think if you do the numbers, the numbers show over the life of the car, because cars do depreciate the minute you start driving them off the lot, you will save money over the life of the car if you buy it outright, as opposed to continuing to lease it, especially with the way interest rates are right now. Mm. By all accounts, when you look at the measures of the economy, it, it's strong, but yeah. it doesn't feel strong when no. I'm going to the grocery store. <laughs> exactly. And I think a reason for that is that inflation has become sticky. It's sticking around in lots of areas of our basic life, rent, food, gasoline. This week, McDonald's and Starbucks came out and said, we're seeing more budget conscious consumers. Fewer people are spending big in our stores. So I think people are feeling it in all of those areas. And who are they blaming? The president, for better or for worse. They usually blame whoever's in leadership at the time for those higher prices. I need you on speed dial. Oh, yeah. you've got me. You've got me on oh speed God, dial. I love how I grew you with all the things when you first get here every time. Alexis Christophers, always you. such a pleasure. Thanks, guys.